So continuing on with our previous um, discussion about principal axis factor analysis, um, we had already decided uh, based on our parallel analysis and our um, examination of the scree plot that there may be two factors that would explain the pattern of associations among our measured variables. So, um, so we had typed in two down here under factor extraction. Um, and uh, clicked on continue. And ordinarily, after uh, extracting those two factors, what we would want to do is, well, generally you you uh, you seek out to interpret those factors. So you try to give names um, or meanings to those factors. Um, and generally, um, this happens uh, by uh, providing a, a rotate, utilizing a rotational strategy. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that strategy shortly. Uh, a, a common rotation strategy is uh, Verimax rotation, um, but we're going to leave it as none for right now um, so I can illustrate a, a few more points. Uh, but I am going to click on loading plot because uh, to, uh, in, in this illustration. So we'll click on continue and then OK. And what you'll see is, um, again, you can see up here, these are the two factors that have been extracted uh, and, and essentially retained. Um, and um, so these are the eigenvalues for those. These are the variances accounted for, cumulative variances accounted for. And so now we want to interpret those factors. So we, um, we, can, we could theoretically start with the factor matrix, which is a matrix of correlations between the measured variables and the factors. And so we try to give meaning to those factors based on those correlations. Um, uh, as I just kind of noted, though, commonly we don't really interpret the factor matrix. We actually uh, interpret uh, um, a matrix following um, uh, rotation of uh, coordinate axes. Uh, and so in this particular illustration right here, this factor plot you see right here, this is a plot of those of these correlations on those two factors. So uh, you know if we happen to have three factors or four factors or, or some higher um, uh, level of factors, uh, we wouldn't we would uh, it would be very difficult to make sense out of the factor plot because we start entering into um, you know multi-dimensional space which uh, becomes very hard to kind of visualize but um, you can see right here that with the, our two-factor solution that you know we have factor one and we have a correlation at zero and the correlations range from negative one to positive one we have factor two with a correlation uh, of zero at the midpoint and ranging from negative one uh, to positive one here so when we look at our um, our factor matrix, you can see, um, you know, everything that's really kind of occurring up here uh, in, in these regions of our, of our um, plot. And so you can see that uh, the first measured variable, item 1, item 1 is loading at 0 0.602 on factor 1 and 0 0.101 on factor 2. So if you notice, here's item 1 right here. And so lengthwise, you can see that uh, it's there's much stronger relationship with factor one than with factor two because factor two the you know the vertical distance from from zero is less than what you see in terms of the horizontal distance on factor one um, between zero and and that item so you can also see um, item um, let's try another one item uh, 16 it's correlated at negative 0.291 on factor one so you can see uh, right there that basically you know we're kind of moving in this direction and then it's 0 0.603 which is you know again vertically you know it's kind of falling up in this area right here so you can see that that basically uh, this item would load more highly onto uh, factor two um, so basically uh, we could theoretically go through and name those factors uh, based on the pattern of correlations uh, the, the thing is, is that, um, you know, uh, it can sometimes be difficult prior to rotation to interpret um, the factors based on the, me the, the relationships with the measured variables, particularly when your measured variables are sort of falling in sort of an in-between space uh, in terms of distances 
uh, from those uh, those axes. So, for instance, let's say we have you know a, an item that fell kind of in, right here in this region. You could see that the vertical and horizontal links are roughly the same, and so what that would translate into are roughly equivalent uh, factor loadings across. Uh, the factors and so then it becomes difficult to interpret uh, items such as that you know, um, you know commonly a threshold for interpretation uh, is uh, you know an absolute value uh, that is 0 0.30 uh, or above would be considered um, an adequate factor loading in order to interpret a factor relative to a given measured variable and so sometimes what you can have like is right here you've got this item that is that is meeting that threshold on both factors um, and so then it becomes a little more difficult, uh, same here, uh, for this particular item. So it becomes more difficult to uh, assign that measured variable to a given factor. So um, what we can do is perform a, a rota utilize rotation of these coordinate axes and essentially uh, reorient uh, the axes relative to those, um, those measured variables. So the measured variables are not rotated or changed or moved around. Their positions relative to each other remain exactly the same. What happens is, is that the axes are rotated uh, so that it, it cleans up the interpretation. Uh, and a common rotational strategy is Verimax rotation. So if we click on rotation and Verimax, uh, then we can, we can get those rotated loadings. There are other types of uh, rotational strategies as well. Verimax basically maintains the um, orthogonality of your um, of your um, uh, factor um, uh, axes, um, whereas uh, other types of rotation, uh, like oblique rotation, uh, basically allows the uh, allows there to be correlated factors, and so that's sort of a different story for a different um, video. So at this point, I'm just going to click on ro Verimax rotation, click on OK. And uh, so when we look down here, you can see now I've got the factors plot in rotated space. So you can see that, um, and basically those capture are, are, are reflected in this matrix right here. So, um, so uh, you, you can see that uh, the axes kind of go uh, uh, exhibit uh, are really kind of going through the the, the, the plot of points uh, a little bit better than what we saw up here uh, in this particular uh, matrix right here where there was a little bit more ambiguity in terms of uh, which uh, factors the items actually were um, related to so um, at any rate you can see we've got our, our factor matrix which is the unrotated loadings versus rotated factor ma matrix which are obviously post uh, rotation so you can see uh, just a few differences here uh, for uh, item one it was loaded higher on one uh, less so on two and and essentially a similar pattern emerged here but you can see for item two it cleaned things up a little bit so you know using that 0 0.30 threshold uh, it would be near uh, meeting that criterion on factor one and certainly it met the criterion on factor two but you can see that uh, the, the loading here following rotation is uh, near zero and um, and and still higher on on factor two this, for the third, you have sort of a, a reversal of that pattern, uh, but you can see on factor two that it's near zero, whereas it was um, a little you know higher on uh, prior to rotation. So the basic idea is it helps to clean things up. Uh, Verimax rotation, the effect generally tends to be to uh, maximize the highs and minimize the lows with within a given factor, and so that's essentially what happened. So when you're interpreting the factor loadings, we generally look at the content of associated with the uh, the measured variables. So using this in the context of factor analysis, we could see that um, you know item one right here, I would prefer complex to simple problems loaded highly on factor one. It upsets me to go into a situation without knowing what to expect. Uh, loaded high on factor two. Item three, I like to have the responsibility of handling a situation that requires a lot of thinking. Loaded on factor one. Um, the fourth one, I'm not bothered by things that interrupt my daily routine. This was that reverse coded item. It loaded on to uh, factor two. And so essentially we see really pretty much the same pattern all the way down. Uh, we will see that on item 10 right here, item 10, 
I enjoy being spontaneous didn't load on either of those factors, so I would not be using item 10 as a way of defining uh, either of those factors. Uh, we also see item 12 down here. I find that a well-ordered life with regular items, regular hours make my, makes my life tedious. That didn't work out so well either in terms of either of the factors, so I wouldn't interpret either factor in relation to that. But by and large, uh, the pattern of loadings um, pretty much uh, falls along theoretical lines, at least as how the, um, how the, uh, the measures, um, what the items were originally designed to tap, which is uh, factor one was basically uh, need for cognition. And item two, or factor two, was capturing uh, personal need for structure. So um, that's basically how you would interpret that. And so the, keep in mind that you know when you're uh, reporting on your results and so forth that uh, you also want to uh, go back and make sure that you report on the eigenvalues and the percentage of variance counted for following rotation um, uh, for those rotated factors. So you can see that the effect following rotation is uh, somewhat of a redistribution of the variance accounted for by the factors. So cumulatively, the you know in terms of the cumulative percentage of variance accounted for uh, is uh, the same, but when it comes to um, you know the eigenvalues look different, and the percentage of variance of each of the individual factors is um, is different. But uh, the big, you know, the big takeaway message was is that you know the rotation was designed to help facilitate interpretation of of our um, of our factors, and so that's the basic idea. And we, you know, following rotation, there's no there's no cumulatively the effect is uh, that we account for the same amount of variance uh, in our uh, with respect to our um, our original set of variables. So that pretty well uh, concludes this discussion as it pertains to um, carrying out principal axis factor analysis.